Welcome to Retro Bassin, and welcome to part four of the Lost Lessons of the Bass Professor mini-series, our little tribute to the late Bass Professor, Mr. Doug Hannon. Today, we're going to talk about the lures of the Bass Professor. I will show you some Doug Hannon creations from my personal collection, and we're also going to do a little flip through of this, a 1987 Burke catalog featuring the Doug Hannon Field Guide System. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. The bass professor Doug Hannon had both an inventor's mind and a naturalist's eye. So it's really no surprise that he had his hand in designing a line of lures to specifically suit his style of bass fishing. Today on Retro Bassin, we're going to crack open my old school tackle box and take a look at some of the coolest creations of the bass professor. Everything from the swimming worm to the Doug Hannon snake bait. In the 1980s, the Bass Professor teamed up with Burke Lures to release the Hannon Field Guide System, a line of lures and gear designed for targeting big bass. All right, here is the 1987 Burke catalog featuring Doug Hannon's Field Guide System of Fishing Lures and original Hannon Moon Clock. This is a catalog I picked up not too long ago, and it is packed uh, cover to cover with old school gold, a uh, ton of awesome Doug Hannon lures, and also some lures that do not have the Doug Hannon name on it, but are definitely worth a look at. We'll go ahead and crack this thing open, and I will quickly breeze through these pages because this is a, a Doug Hannon specific episode, but uh, drop a comment down below and let me know if you would like a full walkthrough of the Burke line. In particular, these flex plugs. I've got a number of these. Uh, they are a really unique bait, and we're actually the basis, I think, for a lot of the Doug Hannon lures that we'll show today. So we'll flip through some of these pages. Uh, definitely worth a look through, and we have a little bit more time, including some of these pretty sweet old school worms as well. Uh, but here we go on page 13. We've got the Hannon Field Guide System for Better Bass Fishing. Doug Hannon, inventor, author, naturalist, and master bass fisherman. Uh, no one knows more about the bass and its world than Doug Hannon, the bass professor. Uh, you've read about Doug in the major outdoor magazines. He's a researcher who devoted his life to the study of largemouth bass. He also catches him more than 400 bass over 10 pounds to date. Now Doug Hannon has teamed up with Burke Lures to produce the Hannon system of products. They are approved by Hannon's extensive fishing and fish research and by the 37-year heritage of manufacturing excellence at Burke. Unless they produce and produce big, they're not part of the Hannon system. Uh, I've got to give a shout out before I get into this to another YouTube channel. Uh, actually, another a subscriber to this one, and that is Randy Ablockett over at Intuitive Angling. Uh, he's cranking out just an insane amount of awesome videos these days and did a really good one, which I will link in the description, on the Hannon Swimming Worm. According to Randy, the Swimming Worm technique is actually one that he learned directly from Doug Hannon, who he met at a Bassmaster event. And he also talked about how effective this presentation can be under certain conditions. So let's take a look at the Swimming Worm and see what it says about it in the catalog. Uh, it says, so this is the artificial lure I prefer to fish with for big bass. Fish weighing from 6 to 10 pounds, says Hannon. It triggers savage strikes from big bass because they perceive it as a living thing, not merely lifelike. The secret of the swimming worm is its totally natural swimming action. Hannon's studies on swimming creatures showed that few fishing lures capture a, quote, living look, as does this lure. A water snake tracking through the water may undulate and wiggle, but if you look closely, you'll notice that the snake's head tracks straight and true, Hannon observed. The swimming worm moves exactly the same way through the water when fished on a slow and steady retrieve. 
more than just a plastic worm. It is sold as a pre-rigged system. The lure should be fished on 12-inch camouflage monofilament leader of 20-pound test, to which a unique black four-ball swivel is attached. The other end of the leader is tied to a, quote, hand and hook, a special compound curve three-out worm hook, which allows you to properly rig the worm. The swimming worm is ideal as is for fishing in relatively shallow water, Hannon said. I like to fish around shorelines with sparse brush and grass around old boat docks and other shallow areas. With the addition of a slip sinker or other weight ahead of the swivel, the lure may be fished at any depth. Far simpler than using a plastic worm technique, simply cast the lure out and retrieve it slowly so that it moves around the same rate and speed as a water snake swims. This is actually a bait that I've been on the hunt for for some time and I've not been able to locate any Doug Hannon swimming worms. So bass and buds, if you've got a hot lead on where to pick up one of these, I will totally take it fishing. You can see here it comes in a six inch and also a four inch uh, pre-rigged worm in a number of uh, eh, pretty much old school looking colors. I would say this thing looks pretty similar to uh, eh, some sort of little straight tail worm, almost like a jelly worm. But it's that unique rigging angle, if you can see, of how that thing is rigged that really promotes that unique action. All right, uh, next page in the hand and field guide system, we've got the slinker. Uh, slinks through cover with a lifelike action and another Burke invention that I cannot seem to get my hands on. So let's see what it says about the slinker here. Um, for over 30 years, the sliding bullet sinker has been the most popular method of fishing a plastic worm, explained Hannon. But when fishing heavy brush timber or weeds, or when worming a drop off, the worm weight tends to run up the line, causing you to lose touch with the lure and miss strikes. The typical solution, Hannon said, has been to peg a sliding sinker by jamming a toothpick in the sinker hole to make it stationary. But this produces a stiff, cumbersome action of the lure, Hannon said. The slinker, by contrast, is hinged at both ends to allow the worm to pivot, crawl, and slink over obstacles and bottom contours in a naturally lifelike manner, while retaining the weedless benefits of a Texas rig. Hannah explained the cone-shaped slinker is designed to blend in with most worm designs and actually features uh, annular rings, as do living worms. So this is a very interesting alternative to the slip sinker that, as far as I know, never really took off. I've never seen one of these in the wild, never heard of it being used, but um, again, if I could ever get my hands on some slinkers, you better believe, Baz and Buds, I'd uh, do a little fishing at old school with that thing. Below that, we've got the moon clock, which you talked about in the last episode. Uh, know your chances uh, of success every day of the year. So I guess before it was available by moon times, it came out from Burke, which is pretty cool. All right, looking at the next page here is one of the uh, most iconic Doug Hannon baits that I recall, and that is the Doug Hannon frog bait. Thousands of hours of observation study show that frogs are one of the most favored items on a bass's diet. Since a bass learns that a certain forage food is safe to eat by general cues, size, profile, outline, color, etc., it is necessary to incorporate, even exaggerate, things about a frog that say, quote, food to a big bass. A large protruding eyes, a powerful rear legs, and a ridged back seem to be the main cues. After several prototypes, we were close to a good design. My wife, Lynn, applied her talents as a wildlife artist slash sculptress and carved a beautifully detailed master model. The engineers at Burke then reproduced the master perfectly in their production molds. Even our early prototypes caught some fish, but when the, quote, Lynn-bodied frog was tested, it exceeded our expectations, taking big bass with regularity. Frog bait is the latest in the hand and field guide system of lures. I hope you find it as effective as we have. I do love the color schemes of this bait, and this is really the first Doug Hannon bait that I recall seeing in a Bass Pro Shops catalog. Uh, the frog was offered in six really cool colors. You can see them here. Uh, we've got green leopard frog, bullfrog, pine barrens frog. I think that's my favorite. The brown leopard frog, spring peeper frog, 
and the northern pickerel frog. I do have a few Doug Hannon frog baits in the package and let's just take a minute and appreciate the artwork of this. Uh, this is pretty much the same theme throughout all of the Doug Hannon Burke baits and most of them feature a picture of old Doug in his uh, floppy camo hat holding a couple of, it yeah, looks like 10 pound bass, you know, just an average day on the water. <laughs> So here is the package for the frog bait. You can see it says frog bait there with a the little frog bait logo. And on the back of the package, it says Burke Lures and the Bass Professor present the Hannon system of proven big bass fishing products. Somehow or another, I found a lot of six of these. So I actually have one new in the package of each of the original six colors of the frog bait, including this one, which is green leopard frog, bullfrog, Pine Barrens Frog, Brown Leopard Frog, Spring Peeper Frog, and Northern Pickerel Frog. I also have one of these loose, which is the one that I'll be fishing with next time we get these Doug Hannon baits on the water. And this one is in that really cool Pine Barrens Frog. I didn't realize till I read the catalog that Doug's wife actually carved and painted these. So that makes this bait uh, even more special and yeah, if I can catch a bass on this, uh, I would consider that a huge win. So looking at the bait, uh, I have thrown this one before. I will say it um, floats pretty well. It's actually a foam bait, uh, almost reminiscent of a hydrofoam uh, grass frog from Strike King. Similar-ish material, maybe not quite as spongy. Uh, it does have a little internal weight, and you can see the weight's kind of popping through the belly there after, you know, again, 30 years uh, in the box. It comes with a nice double hook, which honestly, for the time this frog came out, was pretty stout. I know that looks kind of wimpy by today's standards, but at the time this bait was out in 87, that was a pretty serious hook. It's got a pair of nice little frog legs here. I have thrown this thing a couple times. It has a nice little action on the surface, nothing too crazy. Uh, these legs do quiver a little bit. But I think the real appeal of this bait was its natural appearance. Uh, I have never seen a frog before or since quite as realistic as Doug Hannon frog bait. Now, there is a little fold out. We're going to save that one for last. <laughs> uh, but the last of the standard pages of the Hannon field guide system is a really unique bait that I do actually have a couple of. Uh, both in the package and out of the package, and that is the skitterfish. All right, let's see what Burke says about the skitterfish. A uh, deep V body design triggers strikes from any angle. Fish react to the shape and living color patterns of their natural food. The skitterfish is a topwater series of lure designed by Doug Hannon that can't be labeled by ordinary descriptions like plugs or spoons. It may be the best of both categories. Doug created this new concept after countless hours of on-the-water observation of how bass feed in both heavy cover and open water situations. The true baitfish profile of this lure is designed so it can be seen by predators from any angle. Deep V-shaped sides are the key to this natural profile. Bass anglers have scored for years with weedless metal spoons like the silver minnow and the weed wings. The skitterfish offers another option, fast or slow retrieve, move it at a sales pace, or speed up the tempo to suit the feeding preference of bass. The skitterfish offers you a new tool that can open up new angling options on topwater fishing. So this is a 4 inch bait, 3 eighths of an ounce, comes with a 3 alt double X strong hook, and many awesome old school colors below. Boy, I, I wish that I had the array of colors that I see here, but we'll go through these real quick, starting at the bottom. Looks like we've got Golden Shiner, Baitfish, which is a really good-looking blue color, Bluegill, Black Shad, Living Shad, Smallmouth, ooh, I like that one, Fire Tiger, Silver Shad, Baby Bass, and lastly, Living Perch. Uh, that is a really cool bait, and yeah, definitely going to have to throw that one next time I get to uh, FLA. The Skitterfish is another really cool creation from Doug Hannon, and definitely one not as well known as the Frog Bait or the Hannon Snake Bait. 
Uh, according to the package, it says the Skitterfish is a weedless surface plug dash spoon. <laughs> uh, here's one new in the package. Uh, that looks like what kind of color? That's sort of like a uh, probably living perch color, I would say. Uh, you can see there's a little living rubber skirt in there, which is eh, just barely alive. <laughs> to be expected. It's been a, it's been a minute. And a uh, smaller version of Doug Hannon on the back uh, with a description of the Hannon Field Guide system. I do have a couple of these baits out of the package as well. Here is one in a black shad pattern. It's a nice black bait, sort of a red chin and silver scales. And I've also got one in this silver shad. Until I read the description on this bait, I wasn't quite sure what it was supposed to do. Uh, when you cast it out, it does have a pretty modest action. It's got a nice deep V keel to it, um, but it's not necessarily a huge walking bait side to side. Um, in a word, it skitters. But what I'm learning is after reading the description, the appeal of this thing is the visual appearance. And if you notice on its side, you can rotate it from a couple of different angles and you always get a really good look at a bait fish profile. And that is what I think Doug Hannon was going for. The bait itself is made out of that uh, foam material, like all of the Burke Flex Lures. Uh, it's got a little eyelet right here at the nose, and I can sort of tell there is a little internal chain, which means from the hook to here, it's got actually a little bit of a wiggle to it. It's got a nice double hook on there, probably a size or two smaller than the frog bait. It's got a nice living rubber skirt, and these two unique little arms, <laughs> look at that. It's gotta be the weirdest weedless uh, hook I've ever seen. It's a little piece of sort of soft plastic with a little three prong on there. So um, very interesting. Uh, I have thrown this bait as well. It definitely skitters on the surface, very weedless. And yeah, yet another one I cannot wait to chunk and wind down in Florida. Okay, but let's go back a page and get to the spread that I think everybody wants to see and definitely the one that I was most excited about when I decided to do this episode and that is this bait, the old Doug Hannon snake bait. Without a doubt, this has to be one of uh, the bass professor's most brilliant contributions to the sport of bass fishing uh, and that is his floating snake bait series. So before we look at this bait, and I do have a few on hand, both in the package and out of the package, let's see what Burke had to say about the snake bait. Hannon's approach to bass fishing is based on his deep understanding of the bass as a living thing. In observing bass in their natural habitat, Doug has watched them feeding on many different things, including water snakes, which make up a large part of their diet in many areas. Snake bait duplicates the shape and movement of a living water snake. The beautifully detailed floating snake head was designed and carved by Doug's wife, noted wildlife sculptress Lynn Hannon. And Lynn also created the new lifelike reptile profile of the snake bait tails. The snake bait system is available rigged and color balanced with eight snake quote species. The components are a snake bait head, custom draft hook, and a special matching new reptile profile snakebait tail. The combination results in a floating weedless lure that looks like a swimming snake. And the explosive vicious strikes it creates proves the fish agree. The sensation of 86 is even better in 87. Doug and Lynn Hannon are not content with quote superior, they live for excellence and succeeded when they redesigned the snake bait tail. The new reptile profile is a true snake pattern, having a narrow back widening uh, to a flat belly. Proper scale patterns and a remarkable swimming action. The fisherman's phenomenal acceptance of the original snake bait attests to the effectiveness of the lure. The improved version represents the Hannon's commitment to excellence. In addition, Doug Hannon's research shows that in clear or slightly stained water conditions, small lures can trigger strikes more often than larger ones. So the new 5-inch baby snake bait was developed. Lynn Hannon again carved the master mold and the results are a perfect size and weight 
for spin fishing or light bait casting. The floating foam head matches the new reptile profile body, and the custom draft number two hook completes the assembly. So here we go, just a really glorious, almost frameable spread of the Doug Hannon snake bait. We can see it in all the different sizes and also colors. Let's go ahead and look at these. Uh, I see grass snake. Looks like that's in the smaller size. Copperhead. Woo! Look at that. Rattlesnake. Oh. Black moccasin. Blue racer. I've got a few of those. Black snake. Green snake. I like that one. And red garter snake. And over here is a new snake bait fishing tip, which I don't think I know about. So I'm curious to see what this has to say. Snake bait becomes deadly bottom scratching lure. Huh. Doug Hannon reports important new snake bait fishing method. I discovered that combining the floating qualities of a snake bait with a pegged slip sinker or a slinker makes a deadly suspended lure that crawls over any bottom contour. It is highly visible to cover oriented bass, much more so than a traditional slinker worm combination. The best way to rig a sinking snake bait is to thread a short 12 inch leader through the floating head, tie a snap or swivel to one end and the snake hook to the other. Attach a slip sinker above the snap and peg it in place. The lure will now follow the bottom, crawling over, but not through, brush piles, logs, matted weeds, etc. When at rest, the snake bait suspends above the bottom, and upon retrieval, swims just overhead of whatever cover is present. Very unique way that I never thought of fishing the snake bait, but uh, I might have to give that one a whirl as well. Without a doubt, my favorite Doug Hannon invention, and definitely one of the hardest to find, is this. The Doug Hannon snake bait. It came in a single card like this with a, a little bit of plastic on it. And what you get in the snake bait kit is a snake bait head, hook, one uh, tail already rigged up, and then two spares. Here is one in grass snake. This is the larger size. And I've also got one in this one, which is the blue racer. And here it is in the smaller size. And the smaller size just comes with one head and one little bait. Here's a snake bait out of the package, sort of rigged up as you would fish it. And there's three components to this. The first is the foam head. It is a floating foam head of similar material to the rest of the Burke Flex Lures. It's got an awesome profile. I mean, that 100% looks like a snake head. Uh, the front, there's a little through hole and it goes through to the back of the head itself. That is the first component. And if you're gonna rig this thing, the first thing you do is actually slide this up the line like a slip sinker. From there, you've got this, which is a uh, offset hook with a snake bait trailer. And this trailer came in a few different forms. The first one is this, which is the uh, wigwag worm from Burke. And in a later version, they change this to make it look even more snake-like. So with the head slid up the line, we go ahead and tie this on. This is pre-rigged, you can rig this weedless. This uh, bait has been around for a minute, so it's a little bit tough to keep it weedless. And then what you do is just slide the head down the line and pop it right on the bait like that. When you cast this, this 100% tracks like a snake. It will glide through the water, and yes, that head tracks true, just like Doug always preached, but this tail does anything but. And here's a tail from a open pack with the blue racer color. And you can see that the design of the tail, I guess in 1987, definitely changed. Uh, the actual worm, or rather snake itself, has a flat bottom and a triangular shaped back with some really nice snake scales on it. And the tail itself definitely has more of a snake-like pattern with a I would say a little rattlesnake type uh, tail right there, huh? <laughs> Pretty cool. So that was the one addition to the snake bait. Um, as far as the durability of this, this definitely feels like a more durable bait than the previous model that was just that wigwag worm. Uh, this one has, if you were just throwing this as a plastic worm, you would think it was almost too firm. I could see that. But if this is gonna be your top water bait and these tails are hard to come by, 
and you only get three in a pack, uh, I'm kind of glad that this thing is a little bit more firm. And while we're rigging up baits, uh, since I'm going to be taking this guy on the water as well, I will show you how to rig up a snake bait from scratch. This one being of the blue racer variety. So first thing, I'll take off the snake head off the hook here. And you can see the hook definitely is a unique shape. I don't even know what to call that. It's almost got like a true turn bend here, but then a sort of long front section, which I think is meant to go up into the head of the snake bait lure. I'm gonna go ahead and rig this with the tail facing upward. I think that's the way that Doug would do it. I'm gonna go in at the nose, and you know what? Let's see how far back I wanna go. Uh, I actually want a, a good bit of this hook sticking out there, so I'm actually not gonna go back as far as you think I might. I'm gonna go back about uh, maybe a half inch or a quarter inch and come out the flat side of the bottom. Slide it up, and there we go. And then from there, I'm gonna pre-measure and go in on weedless here. All right, so there, that is rigged up. That is uh, as it will be. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the head on here just for looks. And there is a snake bait rigged up. Man, um, that's a good looking bait. Now, while about 90% of this episode is dedicated to discontinued Burke lures, it would be hard to talk about the Doug Hannett snake bait without mentioning an as seen on TV rendition that he came out with a few years later. Here is a pretty cool kit that I picked up. It is the Doug Hannon Fishing Snake Kit, and this is actually the first ever Doug Hannon snake bait that I personally owned. It is a really cool kit. It comes with a DVD on how to use the snake bait. Unlike the three-part system of the Burke snake bait, this one is made up of just two components, uh, the snake itself and a hook. The snakes come in one, two, three, four, five different colors, and in the kit, you actually just get one of each. These are made of sort of an elastic material, um, sort of like some of those elastic swim baits that you get for saltwater that can like, you know, catch a hundred bluefish and not get destroyed. That's pretty much what these are made of. And it comes with, it looks like four or five different uh, J-Ben style hooks as well. So who even makes this bait? Uh, it's definitely not Burke. It was made by fishingsnake.com, distributed by NML Inc in St. Cloud, Florida. So I'm pretty sure this was Doug's own company that he used to make this bait. Uh, it says the uh, fishing snake, awesome lifelike natural topwater swimming motion. It floats, coils, swims, super for big fish in salt water and fresh. That is the one big difference of this snake bait over the original is it does come pre-coiled. You can see the bait itself, it's not just laid in there like that, it's actually molded in a coil. And if you take it out of here, it will return to that. But when you fish it, you pull it, that snake actually goes straight temporarily and then recoils into its original shape. It's actually a really unique action, unlike anything I've ever seen and definitely a lot different than the original snake bait. Not sure if it's better, but it's definitely different. The back is pretty cool as well. Uh, what does it say about this awesome, uh, natural, lifelike swimming motion and so easy to fish? It says, congratulations, you now own my ultimate big fish lure, the fishing snake seen on our uh, TV program, Big Fish Secrets. Please follow these tips and hang on for explosive topwater action from big fish of many species. Uh, so what are we supposed to do with the Doug Hannon new and improved snake bait? Uh, cast to the shore and slither into the water. Uh, fish rocks, reeds, grasses, pads, stumps. Slow, twitch, pause, twitch. Stop and allow the fish snake to uh, coil into its natural defensive posture. And it totally does that. Carolina rigging or uh, Texas rigging is highly effective. Interesting. Uh, use spinning reels for longer casts. Uh, outfitted with my new guaranteed tangle-free wave spin. Uh, spinning reel, which surprisingly we didn't uh, mention in this mini-series on the Bass Professor. Uh, like all soft plastics, avoid high heat. Uh, keep the fishing snake in a cool, uh, hydrodynamically designed shape and scent. Uh, do not leave in a tackle box, a truck, boat, garage. And do not mix with other soft plastics. Uh, enjoy and all the best, Doug Hannon, the Bass Professor, who uh, at the time of the fishing snake has caught over... 1,000 10-pound bass. 
Uh, very cool. Uh, I actually do have a few of these that I uh, am willing to rip open at least one of them on the next trip. And maybe we'll do a little side by side of the original snake and the uh, quote unquote new one, which is not new anymore. <laughs> Well, thanks again for tuning in to Retro Bass, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this Lost Lessons of the Bass Professor miniseries. We actually do have a few trips lined up to Florida, and some, believe it or not, in the Bass Professor's old stomping grounds. So you better believe we're going to get some of these Doug Hannon creations on the water very soon. In the meantime, if you're looking for more old school content, click right here. Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep the carpet side up, and definitely... Fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassoon.